Hey, this is Tony with Salt Strong, and in this video, you're going to see a Q&A that was pulled from one of our inner circle calls that we do exclusively with our Insider Club members. And what it is, it's basically a live Zoom call where if you're an Insider member, you can get on the call, ask any type of question you want, fishing related. Some weeks we have a specific topic that we'll talk about. Other weeks, it'll just be an open Q&A forum where you can ask any questions you may have. So if you're not an Insider member yet, highly recommend checking that out where you can have access to these inner circle calls every week. And if you are an Insider member and you're not taking advantage of this, definitely do so. We do them every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's go ahead and switch over to the actual Q&A. You'll see this question is about stingrays and what to do when you are wade fishing, how to avoid getting stung. All right, next question from Bruce. Uh, when you're wade fishing, any concern with stingrays? So 100% yes, and I could say that probably for all of us here, even we're separated all across the country, stingray population is very healthy. Uh, but fortunately, there are a few things you can do to minimize getting hit by one of those things because they are nasty. Um, one of the things, if you've ever heard of it, or you could just Google it probably, but it's called the stingray shuffle. And is, you look really funny doing it, but the concept behind it is, you know, you have both of your feet, you know, on the, the bottom basically, and you're shuffling them to where you're kicking up a little bit of mud because basically the stingray, the way its body is shaped, as long as you're not going directly into the back of it with the hook, Theoretically, you should hit the lip of, you know, the side of its fin, which will spook it off and, you know, basically get out of there before you go. Because if not, you, and you step on top of it, the first thing it's going to do is, you know, try and hit you with that barb to get you off of it. So that's a really good thing to do. Um, and you look funny, but trust me, when you step on a stingray, you will definitely make sure that uh, you're going to start doing that. Because I've had some very close calls trying to walk too fast, especially in murky water. Um, and I know why it gets out there with them. So that, that's a good one too. Then another thing you can do is um, they actually have several, there's a couple new companies that came out with, with actual like garters um, and you can put them around your shins and some of them go up actually pretty high as well. I don't remember the name of the company that came out with it. Is, why do you remember that one? Yeah. So Bart's, Bart's Bay or Bart's Armor makes yeah. Ray Shields, Ray Guards, uh, mm -hmm. Forever Last, which is the Texas company here that I do all my waiting gear. Honestly, I'd recommend the Forever Last Ray Guards. Um, it's just a good company, makes a really quality product. They make the waiting belt that I use. Most times when you're out waiting, if you're waiting, you're probably in clear water. I don't, I generally those marshes you can't even wait around in because it's just mud. So you'll see those stingrays coming at you for the most part. Easiest thing for me is I take my rod point, I hold my lure and I just poke them and <laughs> sends them off away from me. Uh, the, you don't, it's like, you can't yell at them and they won't move. They're not going to, that's not how it works. <laughs> so I, I just, <laughs> yeah, I'm always stingray. Uh, did, did you so learn that the hard I, way, the yelling part? You know, hopefully you didn't learn that the I hard tried way. Yelling them. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Come on, yeah, you filthy animal. You got to. authority here. <laughs> just give them a gentle nudge and they all, all like 99%, they shoot off in the exact opposite direction. Um, I've never had one come at me or charge me after poking it, but you don't want them to come at you. Um, definitely shuffle your feet. Uh, I don't wear the ray guards just because I shuffle. Um, but Justin. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But they, uh, <laughs> But if you, if you just keep an eye out, um, you should be fine. Uh, I've, I've never been hit by a stingray, and I've actually stepped on a couple of them. Um, and shuffling, it will send them off in the other direction. But you should be good out there waiting. Don't let stingrays dissuade you from waiting. Yeah. You're not going to die if you get hit by one. It's like it, you just might throw up once or twice. It's not going to kill you. Yeah, I've, I've covered a lot of miles wade fishing over the years in, in like heavy stingray territory and I still never been hit. And uh, and it's just what, what Richard said, uh, the shuffle. And it's kind of like a moonwalk, but forward where like your feet never go off the ground. And, and it's just, I always just drag my front toe and just have my front toe just go ride along the ground. And I've had many times where I basically kick them off, you know, because a lot of times I'm looking around, I'm rarely looking at my feet while wade fishing. And uh and I've kicked off a lot. I've still never got hit by one, but make sure to wear some good boots that have, I just wear like for years, I just wore the Bass Pro boots, the little $20 wading boots. Um, I, I kicked off a lot of stingrays with those and never got hit, but uh, the top is, isn't as thick as a lot of the newer ones are. So I'd say just get some good wading boots with like thick rubber on the toe and around the sides. 
and uh, and you should be fine. Just just be careful. Go slow and just don't step on those stingrays. That that should be like the the number one rule when you're out there, and you should be you should be just fine. If you do get hit, uh, I believe it's it, what's the fix for it? Warm water is what I've heard. Up oh, warm. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that's maybe that's catfish. No, no, no it's, warm. For, it's for jellyfish. <laughs> what are yeah. we talking about? That? Yeah. yeah, it's warm water because I was fishing with a member, uh, one of our insider members, um, and and he got stung. I had to leave early, and he was still out there waiting. He actually got hit. And he stepped right on it, um, and he said he was in just horrible pain, like the worst pain he's felt in a long time. And he got home and made some calls, and someone mentioned just just put it the foot in the really hot water. And so we got some really hot water, put his foot in there, and he was like, it was like a light switch. Um, so if you do get hit, make sure to have some yeah, hot water. Yeah, hot water takes it away is what Cody Cody said. So the good news is that the, it hurts. It'll hurt really bad, but the good news is just have some hot water, get some hot water. And some people use the the uh, the outflow from the motor, right? The little, the, where the motor's peeing, that water's actually pretty hot. I've heard of people getting that and, and putting their foot in there just to help ease the pain. Um, so you do still pee on it is what I'm hearing. <laughs> well, the motor pees on it. it better have a motor pee on it. Not your, uh, not your, your okay. fishing buddy. <laughs> Ster sterile. Yeah. Actually, maybe not. I don't know. It probably has all sorts of fuel in there. So maybe, maybe that's not a good idea, but I've heard of people doing well, another thing to check though, make sure that the barbs, like if it's a smaller stingray, a lot of times that barb is not very thick. It's not strong. My dad, when he got hit by a stingray was still getting venom pumped into him. Uh, because that barb was still on his foot. So first thing to check for, make sure that there's no barb fragments still in there because uh, that'll keep pumping venom and it's going to hurt like all get out. So that'd be the first thing to check for. Yeah, and so Cody uh, Cody mentioned here in the chat, it said, yeah, it cost him $1,200 $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, at the hospital to figure out the uh, the hot water thing. So I think that's a great question. I'm really glad he raised that. Um, very important because regardless of where you fish, if you're waiting, there's going to be stingrays around. So the risk is there, but the good news is the risk is small as long as you do the, the old moonwalk. So again, these inner circle calls are exclusively for our Insider Club members, and they can go anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half long. We do go over the time limit sometimes just because we do want to make sure all questions are answered. So if you're not an Insider Club member, highly recommend checking it out at saltstrong.com. And if you are a member and you are missing out on these calls, this is just a friendly reminder to make sure you're jumping on there so you can get your questions answered. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it because we actually guarantee that you'll start catching more inshore fish while saving time and money. We do this through premium education, our exclusive insider fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, we hope to see you again soon.